Hello, explorers and entrepreneurs. My name is TB Skyn, and welcome back to the Boss Designs of Dark Souls 2 Extra. See, after the last video, I still had some footage left over from the recording session that kind of, there was a full hour of it, and it kind of couldn't go into the next episode because it wasn't leading up to anything. But I also couldn't just throw it out because there was actually some stuff in there that might matter for future analysis. So that footage is here now with a little bit of analysis maybe here and there, but mostly just making sure that this footage doesn't go to waste and that we aren't missing some kind of crucial context down the line if I threw it out. Enjoy! Speaking of scorpions, actually... Speaking of scorpions, there was another one. There was another scorpion who I decided to not deal with at all. Might be relevant. Yeah, 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 you're a jar, you're cursed, I get it, whatever. Plus there's the guy in the wheelchair, we didn't, we didn't get to meet wheelchair guy. There must be a way to see him. Maybe here, actually, come to think of it. Hmm. Poor soul ahead, weakness leg. Oh, there he is. Hello, Mr. Wheelchair Man. Uh, how do I get up here? Actually, good point. How do I even get out of here? What the hell is that? Oh, it's the crow ladies! Or crow things. I don't know they're ladies, really. Mostly just because of the white hips. Okay. There's one of those here. Oh, I just... I just walk out the window. Okay, so I can jump down to him from above, maybe? So is it this one over here? Uh, I'm gonna be annoyed. Hey! It was correct! Homing soul mass. That would be a spell. Hello, old timer. I'm flattered, but I'm not interested in a relationship right now. But with a darkish shadow, you still unprepared for a deeper dark. Okay. And like every undead, you have no future. Oh my, don't mind me. I'm just talking amongst myself. But if you find a need for a truer dark, then meet again. We shall. Okay. The dark is still nascent within you. May the dark shine your way. The dark. Alright, sure. Is this an elevator of some sort? No? Just a platform? Cool. Well, okay, I was hoping he would have something for me. Anyway, the scorpion guy. That's, that's what we were doing. Hey, you found him. Okay. Oh, I can't target him. Are they not hostile? Ally ahead. Ally ahead, but try ring? Try ring. Oh, you better not aggro on me right now. Ring required ahead. Oh. Well, let's have a look at you. Bit of a Mad Max look here. Or a gladiator. Oh, I love that. I like that a lot. Much more than the... Than, um, the Scorpion S, he's got, you can see the scales from his scorpion form kind of intruding on his flesh. And a tiny little stinger. And big ass claws. Oh, hello. But that, oof. But I want to know, okay. Do I have a ring that'll, that'll, that'll let me 
Blood bind, ring of blades, ring of restoration, covetous, blah blah blah, ring of giants, ritual? No, doesn't look like it. Okay, well, there must be some ring that lets me talk to her, uh, to him, to them, to the, the person. Rings. Did she sell one that did that? He did. Hi. Yeah, I thought I remember. Hear the inner voices of surrounding foes, useful for locating hidden enemies and perhaps a few other things as well. I guess maybe? Okay, that, mm, that might be, do I have some extra souls I can get? No, not without using the boss souls. Well, I can use the sentinel soul because I don't want that spell. I don't need it. Let's try that. Let's try that. Satisfied? We'll see. It's gonna suck if it turns out to not be the thing. I guess thank God for the messages on the ground, otherwise I would never have figured that out. Eh, I'm gonna get cursed in there. Ugh. Okay. Okay, this had better work now. You've defeated my better half. Hey! This is my thanks. Take it. Oh, okay. I have no gods to pray to, but still I pray that your journey will be safe. Oh, cool. I have no... But okay, so I should probably have talked to him before I fought the scorpion lady. Feels like he would have had more to say, but he called her his better half. So does that mean they were lovers? I could probably have found out if I hadn't killed her before talking to him. Hey, Future Sky in here, jumping in with a bit of a visual conceit borrowed from my Nier Automata playthrough, which I wish more people enjoyed. So, we've already talked about Scorpion as Nashka, whose name I mispronounced repeatedly in the previous episode, and how she can essentially be read as a person who has been completely taken over by their own monstrous traits, all their own worst attributes. And here, then, we have Man Scorpion Tark, which is a heck of a name to have, who calls her his better half, presumably because they had some sort of romantic relationship, but who's also kind of a mirror image of what Nashka turned out to be. Where Nashka is hostile, Tark is friendly, where Nashka has enormous stingers, in fact two of them, growing out of her back but very tiny claws, Tark, by contrast, has a fairly small stinger, but two enormous claws on the front of his body. And where Nashka's human parts were comparatively tiny next to her scorpion body, with Tark, her husband, the relationship is much more even. The human part is literally a bigger part of him, whereas with Nashka, the vast majority of her was the scorpion. This is just basically speaking perfectly good character design. It's a great way to establish a visual relationship between characters to give them similar attributes, but to balance them differently to indicate that they have a different relationship with those attributes. And as a side note, Tark also wears, well, not a lot, but some clothing, whereas Nashka has decided to go entirely naked on her upper body. And to a certain extent, that's probably just to keep Nashka attractive, I guess, which is the kind of boring reasoning that character design is often used, but on another level, it also indicates that Tark has a greater connection to human ideas of civilization, which are very deeply tied to stuff like clothing and fashion and expressing your culture through your outfit. So yeah, I would have loved to know what the actual relationship was between- I really should have talked to Tark before killing Nashka, but, oh uh, well, it gives me an opportunity to interpret the character through his character design rather than just reading the lore, at least. Well, since he's given me the branch, feels like you're supposed to use that one here. So, sure. Could you do me a favor and not try to kill me? No? Okay. Jerk. I go through all that trouble. So the ring lets you know that enemies are nearby, I guess. Oh, that's a... Big one, it doesn't have a head? Is that a Dullahan? Oh boy. Bad, very bad, not good. Extremely not great. 
Oh, hey, I can backstab it. Die, 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 die. Thank you. Vengarl. Armor of the ferocious Vengarl of Ferosa. Vengarl was known as a raging deadly warrior. Even Ferosa's lion knights and motley crew of rabbit fighters kept him at arm's length. No helmet. <laughs> of course, no helmet. So that was Vengarl? I guess. Friend but enemy? Oh my god, really? Is this a different area? Okay, need more fragrant branches, I guess. Well, that was a whole lot of nothing. Do you have some more branches, dude? I have not. Okay, well, mm, all right. Very well spoken for a scorpion man. So I feel like I could probably get to that little area from, like if I go back to the misty area. Oh. Leave me be. Wait, what? I like it quiet. Leave me be. What business have you here? What the hell am I talking? Is that is that a head? You may call me Vengal. Oh, hello. I have a name in this sorry state. I think I killed your body by accident. It is rare to flap these gums. This is pleasant. Long ago. I was hired to defend the kingdom. I remember a long, brutal fight, and then... Somebody killed me. Or so I thought. I came to... And found myself like this. That must be boring. explains it. But it's not so bad. Really. Now I watch the days go by. And gaze at the night sky. Thinking of the finer things, far removed from war. I've grown weary of battle, but did not realize it until now. You're very talkative for a man with this journey. no body. What will I deign to ask? You may bear a great burden, but don't we all? I prefer to stay my distance, but I want to warn you of something. My body. Oh, that's not going to be a problem. I see visions. My body, headless, raging without me. My body, wielding my sword, a sword forged only to kill. My body will show no mercy. If you see the wretched thing, stay far away. No, I, we're fine. Okay, so we've already been talking a lot about like split identities and people being split into multiple versions of themselves. Yeah, that Vengarl is that. And specifically, he seems to literally be the most common way that people split their identities between their minds and their bodies. So Vengarl, the body, is raging and wild and completely consumed with a desire to kill and a desire to engage in combat, while Vengarl, the head, is all calm and serene and intellectual and contemplative and just kind of sitting there on the ground looking at the stars, learning things, relishing the art of conversation. And this is a very common way that we tend to conceive of ourselves as split between the desires of the body, which are wild and uncontrollable in some ways, the id of a classical Freudian division of the mind, and the more pure, austere, well-considered, calm intellectualism of the mind, which for a lot of people constitutes their identity. Like, they are their minds, and the body is just a kind of really inconvenient scaffolding that takes the mind where it wants to go, but also has all these unreasonable demands like food and sex and comfort and water. And God, if only the body would stop complaining so much, maybe the head could get on with the real business of being alive, which is to think all the time. Now, from my tone there, you could probably tell that I'm a little bit dismissive of that particular kind of view, but that's only because I used to be someone who lived exclusively in his head and viewed the body merely as a kind of inconvenient. Let me tell you, I don't think that mindset is very healthy, but it's a mindset that a lot of people have, and it's a valid way to think about identity. 
And for Vengarl, the split between his mind and his body has also become a split of discord and peace. His body is a source of chaos for him, and it's also something that thrives in chaos, specifically in the chaos of war, where you don't have to know things, you don't have to think, you just have to act all of the time. His head, by contrast, having examined that life and that way of living from a literally removed position, has grown to prefer the stability and calmness and quietness and infinite predictability of being in the same place every day, looking up at the same trees, looking up at the same sky, where nothing ever really changes. And I gotta say, as someone who makes a living in a profession where my ability to pay rent month to month is never quite certain at the start of each one, yeah, you know, the, the desire for stability amid chaos, that's something I can deeply empathize with. I learn new things every day. Things never learned in battle. And thanks to you, I've recalled the joy of conversation. If I can help you, if you require something, do speak up. Oh, cool. <laughs> Decapitate gesture. <laughs> oh, that's good. Ooh. So those are the weapons that he his body was using, basically. And then his giant ass motherfucker shield. Ah, it was you who vanquished my body. It is my body, you see, and I can sense what happens to it. I do not mourn for it. Good riddance. If you wish for help, summon me. I'm rusty in battle, but we'll fight by your side. What are you gonna do, roll at them? I cannot lie. Sometimes I wonder what's become of the kingdom. I was a hired hand, yes, but we soldiers stared death in the eye together. And for his highness, I am afraid. But perhaps it's for the best. We knew not what we fought for. I was born in Ferosa, Ferosa. in the distant east. When I was born, we were already mired in prolonged conflict, conflict with, with our neighbors. neighbors. Eventually, He's northern. our kingdom fell. Our people scattered. I've been a sellsword ever since. All I ever knew was war. And I can imagine no other way to live. What a fool I was. I am grateful for these peaceful days. But such contentment lies only in the here and now. Why must life be so confounding? Thank you for lending an ear to my ramblings. Here, take these. I have no use for them. Oh, <laughs> the helmet! Yay! <laughs> Go along <laughs> and resume your journey. I got an achievement for that. I cannot lie. Oh, boop. Hey, fire seed. Nice. Better pyromancy. Treasure ahead, <laughs> friend. <laughs> nice. So what's that helmet like? Ooh, cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I have no mustache to show off anymore, on the outside anyway. I shall wear the helmet as a tribute to you, my friend. Okay, so I think we have exhausted the Shaded Woods, which means we can either go th to the doors of Pharaohs and continue exploring there, or... Or... We can go and seek revenge! Today, I face truly the mightiest of my foes. Dennis. I wonder how much easier it's going to be to kill the turtles this time around. The skeletons certainly aren't much of a challenge anymore. Oh, Dark Souls. Never underestimate it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, really? That's how I do it? That's how I f it up? <laughs> I don't think I would have enjoyed either Dark Souls 1 or 2 if I'd played them like 5 or 6 years ago. Because I would just have been angry and controller throwy and just not f this stupid game. I you can't even you know, run over the edge, man. I would have been very angry about that. Gravity remains undefeated. <laughs> yes. I glanced at chat there. 
There we go. Okay. Now for the epic battle. I hope. Ah, for a second I thought he had ghosted me. <laughs> oh, sweet vengeance. Go away. Ha! My greatest victory yet. Oh, hello. Is that a thing? A seed of a tree of giants. A giant rest in peace. Rest in peace. I would guess that's four something. I wonder what that does. I could I could get one of those when I start at the game. Enemies react to invaders from other worlds. Oh. So I kind of forgot to read the full item description of this thing while I was actually playing, but there is there's something slightly important happening here. When the giants fell, they grew into great trees. Death is not the end, for anything that has ever once lived remains part of a great cycle of regeneration. Which, oh hey, death and rebirth, kind of like what we talked about last time with me literally climbing into a coffin and then climbing out as essentially a new person. Or indeed the idea which is very present that by entering Drang Lake, that is your regeneration as a person, like that in that intro cinematic, when you jump into the swirling lake of whatever, then you die, and when you wake up in Drang Lake, you are regenerated as part of the cycle of continuation, which of course also ties into the idea of the lighting and the dimming of the fire and that whole cycle of kindling the flame. So yeah, it's like, yeah, Dark Souls 2 definitely seems to be about that. Makes enemies react to invaders. Oh, that's actually quite nice. That's actually not bad at all. And there's a bonfire in here too. How lovely. How is that loose end tied up? <laughs> I only needed to be like 50 levels higher. And I could beat him! <laughs> so we can go to the door of Pharos. Which... Oh, wait, Pharos. That's the guy who did the thing with the lock stones. And that'll be the last. We'll go through this area for a bit, and then we'll end, I think. I guess I can light my torch there. And there's another dwarf with a hornet helmet, because of course. I guess we'll go check out what sort of fellow he is. Presumably a hostile. Yeah. Oh, that's a flail. Cool flail. Dragon charm. What does that do? Where is, there it is. Cures poison and greatly restores HP. Oh, nice. Oh, he's got big axes. And he throws them, okay. I'd imagine getting hit in the face with those axes is a bad idea. Bug ahead, therefore chance? Does that mean it's one of those titanite things? Titanite bugs? Or... Yep, okay. Uh-huh. No! Get over here, you little sh... No! Oh! You see, like, it, it's taking it... There are rock formations that appear naturally in squares. It's, I think it's a basalt or something that does that. And then they have very cleverly integrated that into like creating architecture around here. So like all the architectural carvings are based around that square rock formation. That's just a really clever way to use the environment. And also to, oh yeah, a culture that exists inside a cave like that would make those kinds of carving. Like it would make sense for someone with a cultural and aesthetic sense to do that. And that's really cool. Like, that's that's just cool environment design. What is that? Oh, it's a tent. <laughs> oh, bonfire. Hey. Brightstone Cove, Sisoldra. And that's the first extra episode of the Boss Designs of Dark Souls 2. I don't know how many more of these there are going to be. It depends on whether I run into some footage that just doesn't 
fit anywhere else. We will be back with streams of Dark Souls 2 to record footage for future episodes. So keep an eye on the channel, join the Discord, follow me on Twitter, do all the other things, and you'll be able to know when that's happening if you happen to be interested. You can also hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons to help make my numbers go up, which YouTube likes, which is, you know, it's the best way that you can support an online content creator right next to direct support. If you want to support me directly, Patreon is there for that. There's some rewards over there. You can go and check those out if you're inclined. And I also have some tip jars down in the description where you can give me a one-time tip for making some stuff and say, hey, you made some stuff. Here's a one-time tip for you for the stuff that you made. If you're not especially inclined to support me directly, believe me, I understand. But as I point out at the end of my videos, for online content creators, one dollar can be the same as literal thousands of views on a video. Like, it makes a huge amount of difference. And especially for smaller content creators, direct support from their viewers is absolutely critical for them to be able to do what they do and justify the time that they put into it. So, if there is an online content creator you follow whose work you enjoy, please consider trying to support them directly with anything you can at any time that you can. Especially as Christmas rears its ugly head over the horizon, a lot of content creators are going to be hard pressed to be able to afford presents and travel and all the things that go along with it. So do consider supporting your favorite content creators for Christmas, even if it's only with a dollar, because that one dollar matters so much more than you think. If you have not enjoyed this video, you can hit the dislike button down below and a YouTube assassin droid will be dispatched to my location to kill me immediately for my failure. Although I appreciate it if you just give me a second so I can go get my shotguns and my body armor and kind of uh, set up the kill field with some crossfire and a few landmines. Like I've joined together with this other bunch of YouTubers who are also being targeted by the bots and we're doing some kind of resistance movement thing. We're not really sure, like maybe we want to do vlogs about it. Maybe we're turning it into video essays. We're definitely going to start a Patreon about it though and we're trying to come up with ideas for merchandise. Let me know in the comments. 